Once again, uh, welcome to the 2017 Special Olympics Maryland Tennis Preseason Webinar. My name is Melissa Kelly, Senior Sports Director of School Sports Programs. I am the staff lead for the sport of tennis. Um, so welcome, and we'd like to also um, uh, run through the agenda. So this evening we will do intros. Um, we'll run through the administrative components relevant to the season. Coaching certifi certification requirements, the coach code of conduct, um, which will um, is new to everyone this year, or newer, some newer components. Uh, want to review the entities of MySOMD, which is the SharePoint site, and then we'll get into the tennis specific review, um, specifically entries, calling, qualifying for the state tournament, and then a rules review and reminders. And I want to make sure that everyone is well aware of the resources that are available to you um, online, and then we'll open up for question and answer. With that, I wanted to acknowledge a few people who are on the call, or Diane is making her way onto the call. Diane is the community tennis director. Um, many, yes, are you on? Correct. Diane? Okay, um, if Hello? she's not, Diane, are you on? Moving on, uh, Diane Michaelis is the director of tennis. She primarily oversees the state tennis tournament, but is quite integral and serves on the sports management team as well. Um, she's been doing it for five, six years already. Um, she is a member of the Howard County management team, so we are very um, appreciative of Diane's contributions over the year, years and then as well um, this year most certainly. Uh, Nancy Van Winter is the community coach representative on the sports management team. Nancy is out of Howard County. Um, she has also served as the uh, Team Maryland tennis coach both in 2014 and then has been named um, in recent weeks as the coach for the 2018 games as well. So congratulations, Nancy. She'll be serving as head coach in that capacity. And thank you uh, as well for being on. I want to yeah. also... I'm sorry, is someone trying to talk? I uh, want to also acknowledge Jeff Abel. Uh, many of you know Jeff Abel in his official role with Special Olympics Maryland. Um, as the Senior Director of Volunteer Management. Um, prior to be hired onto staff, uh, he served as the tennis technical delegate, so he continues in a volunteer capacity on the sports management team in that role as well. Um, Jeff is an avid tennis player, tennis coach, and just an all-around fan of tennis, so um, he works intimately with both the community program and the interscholastic program, so welcome Jeff, who is on the call, and then myself. Um, first, the administrative components of what you need to know as you get started with your practices. I understand that many practices have started this week um, uh, or are looking to start in the very near future, so please pay um, uh, diligent attention and, and you are the, the grassroots level making sure all of these policies are upheld. So we appreciate your efforts in advance. The registration deadline, so these are the deadlines that you definitely want to have on your calendar and work to have these deadlines met even uh, a few days in advance. These are Special Olympics Maryland deadlines, um, so please do know, as is noted in the footnote, that your local area county GMS, which is the registration software, um, that person who acts as the registrar or GMS manager may impose um, due dates well in advance of this um, as he or she needs to work diligently to get the information to us and or in the GMS system. So with that, um, running through the few dates noted here on Monday, September 11th, the rosters um, need to be entered for all athletes, partners, coaches, um, and volunteers participating in the program. So this is basically your announcing who is at your training sessions, who, are, who is involved, who needs to be considered as participating, um, and really that is whether or not they are actually going to participate in the state games at the Fall Sports Festival. We want to make, um, take a true and accurate account of all of those training 
even if their intention is not to um, compete at the culminating event. So please make sure of that. And only those persons who are registered as training um, are then eligible to um, compete in the Fall Sports Fest. So you absolutely want to make sure that roster is reflective of who you deem to be eligible, but really should be ev anyone and everyone who is training in your program. Uh, September 21st is the last day to submit any forms. So with that, that would be for athletes. We collect a valid medical that is current for, remains current for three years. So if they've had it complete and submitted to us in the last three years, they are good to go. Um, and this is all viewable in the uh, GMS system. So you want to work with your local area, county, director, management team, GMS manager um, to acquire those who have um, been expired. Um, they have that information at their fingertips. So um, please do work with them to seek out expirations. Um, as well, relevant to non-athletes, so coaches, unified partners, and volunteers, so that would be coordinators, and in some instances for area counties, they must complete um, a volunteer application, and that must be valid through the date of the Fall Sports Festival, which is October 21st, and that has to be on file at our headquarters. Um, all coaches, both assistants, so anyone serving in a coaching capacity, must have their concussion certification completed and submitted to our office as well by this date, and then head coaches must have their Special Olympics coach certification for their specific sport completed as well. Uh, and then lastly, um, October 5th, uh, the delegation members, team rosters, and their event entries must be in our registration system, uh, GMS. Um, any athlete or partner without an event will be deleted from the games because naturally we would assume that if they're not in an event, then they are not competing. Uh, there is one other deadline that's not noted here, but we'll get to that a little bit later in the presentation. Please know, once again, uh, you are uh, the boots on the ground, you're in the grassroots level, you are talking with family members, athletes, unified partners. Please, we need to all work together to make sure that no athlete or, part or volunteer, including unified partners, participate in any manner with Special Olympics Maryland without the valid uh, paperwork. So, um, and there is no exception to this. You're, you're putting yourself at risk personally if you don't ensure that this is um, adhered to, uh, and then as well the organization. So please make sure that that happens. We realize if someone shows up without the necessary paperwork, it really tears at your heartstrings and you want to, uh, what, what's the harm in letting them hit around some or, or something to that effect. Um, but really there is harm to it if something were to happen. So please make sure that, that, um, that we have the necessary paperwork. Uh, once again, um, all of this information, your area leaders are well aware of the expectations. There really is nothing new here. Um, so please work with them, again, to acquire the deadlines, acquire the necessary forms, so on and so forth, and, um, um, and your um, area county leaders. Uh, once again, this is um, somewhat just some added detail relevant to the forms that are to be submitted for athletes. So every athlete must have a current application for participation. So that is the athlete medical. Um, in addition, the athlete is um, to be eligible for competition at the state level, must have that medical submitted by the deadline, the aforementioned deadline. And it must be valid through the competition date. So make sure of that. The golden rule, uh, the golden date is October 21st, once again, the Fall Sports Festival date. Um, there, um, and then references to what uh, is considered to be valid, so must complete all three pages, necessary, necessary information. So no blanks, it must be completed in its entirety, and then also the necessary signatures, both by um, a medical professional and family member, um, and uh, just make sure it's completed in its entirety, folks. Thank you. So this is a screenshot of page one of the medical. Um, this is a newer form, so um, uh, please know 
um, and collect these back. Once again, your area county leadership does have these forms at their uh, disposal. Okay, relevant to volunteers, um, every coach, uh, every volunteer, uh, including Coaches Unified Partners Program, volunteers, uh, chaperones in this instance, it very well could be, even though it's not an overnight, coordinators, so on and so forth, must have a current volunteer application, be forced there to have any part in training whatsoever, so please make sure of that. Um, and then Special Olympics Maryland will complete a criminal background check for the volunteers and um, once the volunteer, the volunteer must successfully pass the background check in order to participate in the Special Olympics. So it uh, should be very, fairly obvious why we do this. We want to make sure everyone is safe, um, athletes, partners, volunteers alike. Um, so please make sure that, that is, um, these expectations are met. Um, and then some added information. So we, I do realize that we do have some youngsters, so those under the age of 18, um, commonly unified partners, but in other capacities as well. In this instance, um, that individual needs to also complete a volunteer minor reference form and obtain a signed reference from two people with whom they are not related, so um, a viable reference, so that would be uh, a neighbor, a teacher, a coach, um, you get the idea. Um, once they complete this, um, these steps, the volunteer application and screening is valid for three years from the date of the screening, so um, hopefully that provides some relief and some motivation to get it done, because um, you'll be good and in the clear for three additional years. With regard to hey, coaches, Melissa. yes. Hey, Melissa, this is Jeff. Sorry, real fast. Just one clarification there, especially with minors. Um, um, an individual who is under the age of 18, their volunteer application is valid until their 18th birthday. Um, so for some people that could be um, one year, for some people that might be um, five years. Um, but the key is when they're 18, when they, that's when they need to refile an adult application. Um, so that's the only variation from that three-year rule, um, which applies to um, adults who volunteer with the program. Okay, great. Thank you, Jeff. Um, okay, with regard to coach requirements, all coaches, especially Olympic Maryland athletes, must have the following clearances prior to the start of the coach season. So, as mentioned, as stated, the Class A volunteer application. Um, and then also must be complete the and submit the protective behavior screening. This is a, a matter of reading um, and, in some cases, watching a short video and answer, answering a series of, I believe it's uh, 10 questions, and, and passing that. Um, in addition, um, concussion awareness and a concussion, concussion uh, monitoring is absolutely necessary and viable in the world of sports these days, and it, it will apply to our program as well. So with that, all coaches must complete and submit their online concussion training, and we'll get, I'll give some live links for that to access that training um, online. Um, the head coaches of each sport, so um, hopefully you know who you are if you're on this call. You complete the um, coach sport certification uh, for the sport of tennis, and we'll go over how to um, acquire that. All of the above are valid for three years. Uh, and then these are screenshots of the necessary forms. Uh, the student minor volunteer reference form is on the screen now. Uh, the protective behaviors, uh, once again, um, this is a matter of Watching a video uh, is, is, in fact, a video. It takes approximately 10 minutes, um, and it's really making sure that we are all practicing um, safe behaviors and um, looking out for both the athletes and ourselves as well. Um, so moving on, the concussion um, certification, some added detail here, is required by Special Olympics International, Special Olympics North America. And this started in January of 2016, so 
um, it was uh, a roll. Uh, we have been on a rollout um, plan, um, so it is now all coaches, and there are two options. So once again, you will receive a live link in the body of the email, but then also they are obviously available on this slide as well. When you receive the follow-up email, you can acquire, um, obtain the live links either through the PowerPoint or in the body of the email. Nonetheless, once that is completed, the coach is then to email the PDF certificate to coaches at SOMD so that we can update our records and you will be good to go. Uh, please know that S Special VIX Maryland does not automatically receive notification that you have completed this course because it is outside uh, our partnering uh, organization. So please, you have to submit your PDF in order for that um, for to uh, gain credit. Um, with regard to risk management and first response, if there's an accident, incident, injury, so on and so forth, please, I um, uh, just wanted to touch on this briefly. All coaches should be aware um, and know what the first report of an accident or incident. There's a form that you complete, uh, and this may be a medical emergency. Some area counties activate or use this form when there is um, disruptive behavior, so on and so forth. So please, again, work with your area county leaders and um, adhere to their expectations, but with all, all um, every instance of a medical situation, you absolutely want to complete this form and submit it to um, the correct reporting lines. Um, should an incident occur immediately after the injured person has been treated or injured, the coach and program coordinator should complete the form and submit it to the individuals listed at the bottom of the form as well as your area director. So if you don't know who your area director is, um, please take the time to find out who that person is and, and obtain their personal contact information, um, such as a cell phone, um, which would be the most feasible point of contact um, if you are to practice session, I'm sure. So that form looks like this. Um, moving on, uh, the sport coach sports certification, long-standing policy, which we have not consistently adhered to. So all head coaches must have a special Olympic sports certification uh, to be, and it must be valid through the state championship. So that in this case, it's the fall sports festival. And once again, that's valid for three years. Um, if coaches have no previous Special Olympics sports certification in their specific sport, uh, there, are, there are two options. They um, must complete one of two courses or both if you would like, coaching Special Olympics athletes or principles of coaching, and then must complete a sports specific session. So we'll get to those options. Coaches with previous Special Olympic Sports certification, so if you're just a research is what our, refer our common reference is, you must complete one general or one sport specific learning opportunity to renew every three years. And we will once again um, have some of those options in uh, subsequent slides. This applies to all coaches, not just head coaches. So approved course coaches, um, as we are winding down on time, I want to make sure we have um, ample time to cover all of the sport specific information. I'll leave this to you to study um, on your own. Um, all of the options are there. We do have one uh, in-person session uh, hosted, or excuse me, scheduled already. So um, you can uh, study these slides, and then we welcome the opportunity to host in-person sessions. Um, so we have one scheduled for Wednesday, August 30th at Arundel High School in Anne Arundel County. The on-court portion of the training will begin at 5.30. So this is a school-based training for the Anne Arundel County Public Schools Unified uh, tennis program. Um, we've done this for the past three uh, years or so, opened up the um, the school system trainings to the county program. Um, and I think the the uh, coaches from the area county program have enjoyed uh, attending those and being alongside the uh, school system coaches as well. So if you wish to attend this, please register using the live link there 
SurveyMonkey and know that registration in order to have the um, to have everything ready and um, should there be a, a rain scenario, uh, please do register no later than Monday, August 28th at 5 o'clock. Uh, and then once again, we do invite and encourage area counties to step up and uh, offer to host in-person coaches trainings. If that is something you would like to offer, uh, we need to have it well in advance of the uh, first qualifier, which is a month from today. Um, so hopefully we can hurry and get some additional opportunities on the calendar. Um, but please let me know if you would like to host an in-person training. And we have um, an exceptional partnership with the USTA, so it's really likely not um, any hardship to get a, a viable clinician out for that. So but please do get me your dates if that is something that interests you. Online sessions, uh, there's a program uh, offered through the USTA Coaching Coach Youth Tennis. Um, uh, and this is a program, so it, while we do have um, adults uh, in our program, uh, there, is, uh, it's, there are viable and very um, uh, um, uh, appropriate skill progression drills and such through this offering. So this is an option to acquire your coach's certification. Uh, and then as well, all of the pricing um, references. So in the sport of tennis, you have coaching youth tennis and then coaching tennis technical and tactical skills. So um, the youth tennis is free and uh, would re you would receive your research if you complete that. Moving on to the Coach's Code of Conduct, um, this is uh, has been um, a discussion point on the uh, Board of Directors, Special Olympics Maryland Board of Directors uh, Sports Subcommittee. So I wanted to share this information with you and the expectation of your behavior. Um, and please know that we are not exclusive to coaches, so know that we are working through a co code of conduct for athletes, uh, unified partners, volunteers, and even family members. So. But just um, given that this is the coaches preseason webinar, I wanted to remind everyone that good sportsmanship and um, respect for all and the various drill down expectations um, remind you of that as we enter into this fall season. So everyone's been really great about that, um, but um, there um, is some added formality and uh, we want to make sure everyone is well aware. So I won't go through that line item by line item. I'll leave that in your capable hands to review and um, ensure that your um, conduct is uh, in compliance. Moving on, my SOMD is the SharePoint site offered by Special Olympics Maryland. Uh, this is a screenshot, so this doesn't look much different than what you've seen before. For those of you who are returning coaches, um, strongly encourage you to um, double check your credentials to make sure you're good to go and viable. We have had an upgrade in recent weeks, so please um, go ahead and access that. So this is the, um, the idea here for anyone who's not familiar in the SharePoint site is that it's basically a folder or a drive in which we load all of the necessary details, documents, schedules, and such onto the site so that it is at your fingertips available to you rather than digging through your emails or filing emails or um, just having uh, an abundance of emails because you're um, um, for, for whatever reason. So with that the SharePoint site is um, like I said upgraded so I just wanted to review that yet again. So the logon looks very similar um, access through somd.org and look for um, the my SOMD icon at the top navigation, the banner. Uh, then click on login. So if you have had credentials in the past, you can click login. If you are new to the program or if you're having trouble with your login, there are the appropriate selections there just under the login option along the right navigation. And then once you have submitted your form, um, if you're new, you will receive an email notification 
um, that your request has been submitted and then within approximately three business days you'll receive your username and password, sometimes it's faster than that. Um, and this is what the new screen looks like in the upgrade. So um, the site itself looks very similar, um, but I want to give everyone um, make notes specifically. There will be a folder there titled, um, you'll have to do some toggling through the various um, folders you would look for. Um, I think the header is coaches and then um, you'll see um, documents and, or, and then tennis and then you'll see um, it's very user friendly. So this is the screenshot of the tennis calendar or excuse me the calendar of all area county offerings or sports related events. Um, so with that wanted to congratulate Howard County for being um, the uh, pioneer in submitting your um, your sanction form uh, once again this fall. So Howard is scheduled for Sunday, September 17th at Reservoir High School. Um, and then what relevant to my SOMD, you would click on that blue box and it would be a pop-up and in the appointment itself, the sanction form is attached the address of the venue, uh, the contact information of the tournament director. So it's really user friendly, very helpful. So um, please do um, reactivate your credentials if you're returning or if you're new, um, go ahead and request a login and uh, get that going. Uh, Melissa, one note on my SOMD. This is Mike uh, Zarnowski, folks. I think I know most of you. Um, uh, Al and Garita from our uh, tech uh, provider will be sending out to all users uh, the new email or the new uh, username is a slight variation from what's been done before. Um, that should be all opened up either tonight or tomorrow. Um, so uh, it'll be using the email address that you registered in MySOMD with, that's all we've got. Uh, so if you don't receive something like that in the next, uh, let's say by Monday at the very latest, you may want to resubmit, uh, but it should be open to everybody very shortly. Great. Thank you, Mike. Okay. Um, now we're going to move on to the sports-specific information, which I hope to be able to turn this over to Diane Michaelis. Um, Diane, are you there? I'm there. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, yes. Great. Okay. <laughs> it works. Okay. It works. Yay. Very good. All right, um, so I'm going to cover the first few slides because those are more administrative and um, my um, things that we've talked through as a sports management team, but just wanted to uh, make sure, I believe I can cover this adequately. So sports management members, please feel free to jump in, uh, but I'll take a go at it. So with regard to eligibility, and this is very important, so please do. I know it's been a lengthy presentation already and, and uh, very administrative driven, but um, please perk up and uh, listen intently. Um, the athletes and partners, so partners also, uh, must have a tennis rating, and we have changed this form. So in years past with the uh, community program, we have used the Special Olympics International form. Um, and we've uh, moved away from this slightly this year. Um, we are now, for local purposes, we are going to adopt the a rating form that has been used in the school system um, uh, for a couple reasons. One, uh, the school system use a, uses a slight variation to the Special Olympics International form um, because we were strongly encouraged to do so uh, by way of the USTA, uh, and uh, secondly, it's, it's a bit more user-friendly. So um, someone who doesn't know tennis all that well um, could go out and read these descriptions quite easily and hopefully uh, get in the range or, or the general ballpark of uh, getting one's rating correct. So we want to make sure we are um, absolutely clear with the expectation to use this form, which there's a uh, screenshot of the form, and those of you who are very familiar with the Special Olympics International form, you will see it's very similar. Um, some added components, um, there is a section here at the bottom, and I know it's difficult to see, 
let me pause my screen for a moment and switch to the form itself. Okay, I'm not sure if this is much better, um, but here at the bottom it's the Raiders level recommendation and he or she would check one of the options. So if um, one is um, most appropriate to play individual skills, he or she would check this box, um, short court, uh, full court green ball, excuse me, that should be level four, so I'll make that correction before I send that out, or full court yellow ball. Um, so regardless of what the, um, we're seeing that there may be some inconsistencies with the actual quantitative uh, rating and then what is a realistic assessment of one's playing ability. So um, we have had extensive discussions relevant to movement. So one, one could score um, very high in all of the five categories and really not have any movement at all, but could then be rated by score to be a green ball player, but um, really is, isn't getting around the court as a green ball player would would need to. So wanted to share that with everyone. Um, that form will be made available um, through my SOMD, but then also will be e emailed out to everyone in the follow-up email, which you will receive tomorrow. Um, sports management team members, anything to add on that? Nope. Nope. Thank you. Um, let me get back to the PowerPoint. My apologies for the delay. Okay. Okay. Um, moving on to the next slide. Athletes and partners must compete in a minimum of two sanctioned qualifiers in order to be eligible to compete at the Fall Sports Festival. One qualifier must be a sanctioned multi program or multi area county qualifier, and one may be an in house qualifier, so that would be exclusive to uh, one's home, if you will, area county. Um, regardless of a multi-program or in-house qualifier, um, you must have the following criteria met in that there is sufficient number of players available to provide appropriate match competition. Officials are in place and proper scores being um, maintained and then as well the appropriate rules are being followed and then the scores are recorded and submitted as a follow-up to our headquarters. Uh, one last point which was a very um, unfortunate scenario last year, so we want to really take the time and drive this home with everyone. So each player, athletes and unified partners must qualify in those events in which he or she will compete at the Fall Sports Festival. For, so really keep this in mind because we, we bring up that instance, we realize people lose interest, so if, if you have a player um, and you fully intend for that player to play doubles and he or she, they, they qualify, go to their two qualifiers as doubles pairs, and then someone loses interest or stops showing up to practice. Um, a player who um, is present and still going to practice and fully committed um, has not qualified for the Fall Sports Festival. And I don't say this to discourage you from having doubles um, entries or such, but just know that it's, it's very important that we have a very plentiful qualifier, qualifier schedule. Um, and then as well, we, we really, because we want our athletes, we want the players to play as much as they can. Practicing is great. Practicing is necessary. Um, but it's, uh, it's really fun for them to get out and play some. And as all of you know, you really learn an added entity of the game um, through competition. So. That's one reason, and then secondly, if the instance occurs that you have doubles, pairs, 
all lined up and they go to a qualifier or two um, and, and we only have two qualifiers available, maybe three open to, to all of the area counties. Uh, that could prove to be pop pop problematic for um, anyone who trails off and doesn't complete their commitment of the full season. So please know that it's not something that we want to uphold, but it's um, a scenario in which we had to face last year. So we want to make sure of that. Um, and then as well, players, so athletes and unified partners alike, mu uh, may enter only one event at the Fall Sports Festival. So that would be um, singles or doubles, be it traditional or uh, unified. So um, know that as well. Um, and then once again, additional to under underscore, uh, literally, <laughs> um, the additional competition experiences um, above the minimum requirement are, is strongly encouraged. We would love, again, for our players to be out there and, and they really appreciate those opportunities. Uh, so qualifying for states, once again, two minimum. Uh, need to meet the forms requirements, uh, two minimum uh, qualifiers, and um, uh, an added footnote here that was mentioned in one of my, my email announcement to all of the coaches. Um, in the sport of tennis, similar to our golf program, um, coaches, you are our, um, we, we put a lot of trust in you and you have a lot of responsibility. We want to make sure that you are making the best decisions and using your best discretion for both your team and your individual players. Uh, with that said, um, let, as, I, as I was um, referencing go our golf program, Players do not necessarily have to be accompanied by a coach uh, if they want to compete at qualifiers. However, all players uh, need to be accompanied by a responsible party, so that might be their support staff, their parent, guardian, family member, who will remain at the competition venue for the duration of his or her respective athlete's competition. So it would be great if um, Johnny Jones from uh, Glad Area County uh, could go to every qualifier on our schedule uh, because he's, he has that um, availability and or uh, transportation options. So please know that um, and use your discretion who you open this up to. Certainly it would be people um, who could make this um, meet this requirement and that they have a uh, responsible party to accompany them. Uh, sports management team, anything to add on that? No. Okay, thank you. Um, very briefly, I want to touch on and remind everyone the point of the qualifiers is to give a competition experience to have athletes and unified partners become accustomed to the competition environment. So they need to be, again, rules to be abided by, officials in place, medical personnel has to be on site, um, and then um, uh, they need to be outfitted in their uniforms. So ideally, um, an open qualifier, so a non-in-house qualifier would have three or more area counties. And then an in-house qualifier is, um, for all um, who are familiar with that, um, com very commonly taking a practice session and making it a tournament um, within your practice session, so within your own team. Um, we do need to collect a sanction form uh, and submit it to your area director and or coordinators, whatever your uh, respective structure is at the local, in your local management team. Um, and we need to receive that no less than 30 days in advance. So that is for open qualifiers, so multi-county qualifiers, as well as in-house qualifiers. Um, failure to adhere to any of these expectations uh, may nullify your event status. Um, I already mentioned uh, Sunday, September 17th, Howard County is hosting at Reservoir High School. Um, Nancy Van Winter, her contact information is available there. Uh, we are eager to announce additional qualifying opportunities, so please send us your dates, at, uh, send me your dates. If you haven't completed the forms but you have a date in mind, please let me know. Um, with as few weekends as we have in the fall, we don't want to um, double book ourselves and such, so if you have uh, dates in mind, or dates confirmed, and you just haven't processed the paperwork, please shoot me a note. Um, we're going to open, um, have some discussion at the 
um, end of the call on this um, because of time. Um, because of time, I'm going to table the conversation relevant to this topic specifically to the end of the call. Um, the idea of adopting a format that is used in our team sports um, in that we designate required qualifiers. Um, we commonly have um, an abundance of registrants at the Howard County and Montgomery, Quali Montgomery County qualifiers and it, it might just be getting, if I could say, a, just a tad bit too much to handle uh, for anyone to handle in a reasonable fashion and have a a viable and successful and um, a, a modestly scheduled day. Um, so um, while Montgomery and Howard have done a great job, I wanted to introduce the idea of having required qualifiers for at each level. So for the example offered here, level one and level two players would attend the first qualifier of the season, and then level four and level five players would um, be required to attend the second qualifier of the season. Um, and um, that way it would be um, sort of a, a refined uh, timeline of the day and then more manageable because we're not changing court sizes and, and that sort of thing. So we'll discuss that at the um, conclusion of the call. Uh, the training intent form, just wanted to touch on this briefly. We introduced this concept last year. Um, because we have um, a modest number of area counties that sponsor tennis. Uh, we want a snapshot of what you intend to have your um, athletes or your players registered so that we can um, give other area counties, if it's, if it's as few as one um, person in that event, that we can give that area county a heads up to maybe shift someone to another event. So this form will be in a follow-up email. The due, it's due on Monday, September 11th to SOMD sports at gmail.com so that's on and be, on before and once again you're not tied to this you're not you know this is not full um, you know registration or anything of that sort it's it's more it's absolutely a snapshot so that we can give other coaches a heads up so just a, a quick reference to the last year's count so for example when the forms were initially submitted we only had one woman playing uh, short court uh, we had one man playing um, level five. Um, so all of the red boxes denote uh, those that had only one, one team or one player. So I then was in touch with that area county to let them know and they made the necessary event change so that they had some viable competition. Um, the new rules, um, same as uh, the rules that were, were governed the sport last year, are available using the live link there, um, so there are uh, no changes there. Um, the principle of meaningful involvement, um, as it applies to the sport of tennis, there are seven criteria um, for a Special Olympics Unified Sports Program. Uh, and you really could apply these uh, principles to traditional tennis as well. So. Fundamentally, the principle states that every player should be given the opportunity to contribute to the success of his or her team. Um, with that, demonstrate sufficient sport-specific skill, game understanding. Players uh, have a, a, valid, a valued role uh, and emphasize their personal talents and an opportunity to play without heightened risk. Um, so if they're playing with someone who is exceptionally, um, their skill set is, is not um, within their, uh, the athlete's skill set range, um, it could be a health and risk, health and safety risk. Um, in the sport of tennis, we look for unified partners to facilitate play by blending his or her skills to the level of their uh, athlete teammates. Uh, blending one's skills is um, strongly um, defined as a limit to being limited to uh, no smash shots or overly aggressive shots to the athlete or unified partner for that matter, no uh, rushing the net, aggressive forcible serves, um, once again blending their skills. Um, this goes into some added detail and specifics of examples of both meaningful involvement and then what is uh, a violation of meaningful involvement. 
in the essence of time, we're going to uh, go ahead. Uh, we do um, reserve the right to impose um, vi uh, or act on violations. So the first violation would be met with a, a warning, and second violation over the course of the tournament uh, would be the team uh, would be in violation, loses a point, and then the third violation uh, would be the team uh, will forfeit the match. So that is, um, once again, those offenses would be um, carried over, if you will, from match to match. Um, and this should be adhered to at the um, area county level, so it qualifiers as well. Um, certainly you'll be working with your um, unified partners um, to make sure they're adhering to this principle. Um, so there is, there may be a learning curve, especially for those who are new. Um, so we, we, we could be a little bit more lax at the area county level, but please do work with your players to make sure that we comply. Um, and with that, Diane, I will turn this, um, turn it over to you. Okay, great. Can you all hear me okay? Yes. Okay, <laughs> I've got, I'm on speaker and I don't know if that's better or worse. Um, first of all, thank you everybody for, for being on with us tonight. Um, we all love spending time with our athletes and I know you spend a lot of time instructing them and coaching them and working with them on the court and in, in anticipation of them coming to the Fall Sports Festival where they really get to show off what they've learned. So at the festival we, we try very hard to provide meaningful competition for them, incorporating a lot of what Melissa has already talked about. We want to make sure that we have the right number of, of athletes or teams at the various levels and such. And seriously, we want, to, we want to work with you on this. This is very much a cooperative thing. Um, we want just as much to have a meaningful competitive day and also a fun day for each of your athletes. We, we don't want them to feel that they, they didn't have meaningful competition or that they just didn't get to show what they know. So that's really our goal with all of this, and, and we want to make sure that we keep the dialogue going with, with all of the coaches. So with that in mind, um, as most of you know, we have four different levels of tennis. Um, level one, which is individual skills, and we use the red felt ball. We don't use the foam ball anymore. Um, we started this a few years ago, I guess four or five years ago, and it has been successful um, using that ball. Um, the foam balls were blowing all over the place, so this, this works really well. And we've also, just one comment, I've been doing this, I don't know, for maybe six or seven years as the competition director. We used to have about 40 athletes in the individual skills competition, and now we're down to like 8 or 10. I'm sorry? Oh, I thought somebody said something. Um, because we added this next level, level two, the short court. That's been really great for our program because it allows our athletes to step up to interactive play but not on that huge court that sometimes is intimidating for them. So we have that also with the red ball. Uh, level four is on the full-size court, but with a green ball or a green dot ball, that some of you might call it, um, depending upon where you buy your ball. And that, has, um, that ball doesn't bounce as well. It's a little slower. It's easier for the athlete to work with. And then eventually, hopefully, they move up to level five. We have quite a few athletes in level five which use a regular yellow ball on a full-size court, and that's a lot of fun to watch for those of you who, who might be new and haven't been able to see that. Um, there is one level missing in there, as you see, level three, and that um, we haven't done because we already have several levels as it is, but also we're thinking of introducing that. Very often level three is done on a smaller court, which means taping off a court or something. So we're going to try it on the full-size court, but with an orange ball, which is um, the compression is between the red and the green. So it doesn't bounce quite as much as the green, um, but it's, it's easy to hit, and it's um, going to be a little more challenging than using the red ball. So in each of these levels, these four levels that we have, we will take athletes in singles competition, in doubles, which would be the same gender, either traditional, two athletes, two female athletes, two male athletes, or unified pairs. And we also have mixed doubles, and that could be either traditional or unified. So that's the form that Melissa talked about earlier where we ask you to tell us what you expect to have. That's important because you can see there's a lot of different options. 
So we want to make sure that we've got enough people in each grouping to have some competition that's, that's going to be challenging to them. Uh, do we have, um, a, now some of these you all may not have, and that's what we need to find out. And I'm not sure what you want me to do with this question here, Melissa. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Um, you have a question at the bottom of the sheet, the, the slide. Yeah, I see that now. I'm sorry. Uh, no, just, just move on. I'm sorry. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Next slide. Okay, we already talked about the balls. The foam balls, um, you all are welcome to use them in training, particularly if you've got somebody who is brand new to tennis. It can be a good introduction, um, but we're going to stick with the, the red felt balls that, that look more like a tennis ball. Okay. Uniform. Um, we generally haven't had a problem with this, but we tennis is a very polite. It's a gentle, gentleman's, a gentlewoman's game, um, and everybody wears proper attire. So we're asking that your teams, your athletes wear team uniforms. They might be all the same color. Um, they do not have to have collars. That used to be part of our requirement. But if you watch, you know, as you watch today, even the, the men, the pros generally don't have collared shirts, but they have a nice looking shirt. Um, it is very helpful if their shorts are loose fitting and if they have pockets, particularly if they're playing level four or level five where they're going to have to serve and keep a ball in a pocket. We want to make sure that the girls can wear skirts, that's fine, um, and that the fabric that the uniforms are made out of is appropriate. It should be a knit, you know, a very comfy, cool knit fabric, um, no jeans, no khakis, things like that. Um, we do ask that your athletes have regular tennis shoes, no black sole shoes, and that they um, hopefully their shoes fit and that that's what they've been wearing during the season to practice in. Doubles teammates have to wear the same uniform. Now, that doesn't mean that if it's a mixed doubles, the guy has to wear a skirt, but the shorts and the skirt should match if you've got mixed doubles. And the only reason sweatsuits would be allowed is if it's cold, and that happens occasionally. It is the end of October. We're a little earlier this year, so hopefully that won't happen but that would just be due to weather conditions. The athletes are welcome to wear sweatsuits when they're in between games, um, if they're just sitting around on the sidelines, but they should not be worn during competition. Okay, our matches, and this is the way we've done it for the last seven or eight years, will consist of one six-game set using no ad scoring. And the margin of, the, the win margin is two games. If there is a tie, at six all, then we will have a seven point tie break. And I know this is difficult, but we ask that you please try to practice tie breaks with your athletes so that they at least are familiar with them. It's hard for them to follow because they don't happen that often, but please make sure they're familiar with them. Do some drills on tie breaks, talk a little bit about the scoring and about what happens um, so that they, are, they know what's going on in case that has to be used. Okay, no ad scoring, so it's really the first player to, that wins four points. Um, the, um, that'll be used for all of our matches, and we in the state games, state uh, competition use traditional tennis scoring of 15, 30, 40, and uh, game. So we'll go with that, and just remembering that there's no ad. And so the seventh point of any game would be a game point. Tie break procedure. Oops. Oh. <laughs> okay, I'm Sorry. not sure which one is the player rating system here, but oh, here's tie break. Okay, so this is if our the athletes have the same number of matches won. This isn't for a, for a tie break in a game or in a match, but when they have the same final score, we will look at the fewest number of sets lost in all matches, and this does happen when we're when we're tallying up all the scores. The second criteria will be the most games games one in all matches. The third criteria will be the fewest number of games lost in all of their matches. And the fourth, if we actually have to go to that, would be head-to-head -head results, particularly if it's um, in singles, how, who, who beat whom um, during the, um, the tournament. These I really, really recommend. If you um, haven't, if you've taken the online coaches training, that's great. I did the ASAP training myself a number of years ago. It was it was informative, but please go on to the Special Olympics website and look at some of the resources you have there. There are um, coaches resources, the, the coaching guide, things, the online tennis guide right there, and it's got videos embedded in it now. 
can help you get familiar with the rules, um, planning your training session, coming up with some drills and some things to emphasize that you might not have thought of otherwise. And it's helpful to just every now and then go in. It's a lot to read in one sitting. So, you know, I would say bookmark it and every now and then just, just go in and see what's there. And also encourage your assistant coaches to do the same thing. Because if you're like us, I, I volunteer with Howard, we're out, all out on different courts. And if you run out of things to do with the athletes you, and you think, oh, I read about this, you know, a particular drill or something, that's always helpful to bring something new to a practice. Okay, and these are your, Melissa, I'll turn this over to you, but these are your contacts within SOMD for based on where your program is. Great, thank you, Diane. Um, seeing that we are just a minute past the one hour mark, um, did want to point out, as Diane stated, these are your regional sports directors. Um, they do have sport responsibilities, but they also serve and assist um, area counties. Um, I will offer um, the sports management team contact information, email addresses, that is, um, mm -hmm. in the follow-up email so that if you need to get in touch with us, um, it's really just if it's a, if it's a sport